Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for R. This screencast covers section 11.3, one-way non-parametric ANOVA, sometimes called the Kruskal Wallis test. It also includes 11.4, post hoc testing following a non-parametric one-way ANOVA. This test asks if three or more independent data samples can be considered to be samples from a common population. A significant result indicates that this is unlikely and a post hoc test can be carried out to identify which samples vary to such an extent from each other that they can be considered to come from different populations. This test is a non-parametric test. If you do not understand what this means then please see my screencast Is My Data Normally Distributed? In the example we are using here Eight quadrats were sampled for the number of daisy plants growing in four distinct grassed areas with different uses at the University of Worcester. These areas were the cricket pitch, the lawn, the quadrangle and the rugby pitch. The data can be found in table 11.4. This is the script we are going to be using and in this case it is split over two screens. You may wish to freeze the screencast to look at it in more detail. Or alternatively, you can download it from the Resource Centre. The command functions are in black, are all in lowercase, and you must enter them exactly as shown. The lines in green are notes to help your understanding of how the script flows. The words in blue are variable names and can be changed to suit your data. But you must be consistent in spelling and the use of lower and uppercase letters. And the data are in red. There are several ways to load data into R. See my screencast, Introduction to R, for more details. Looking at the first variable, you can see that we have used a C operator to load the data into R. In the second variable, we have used the rep function, which will create a variable with each category or factor name in quotes repeated the number of times specified by the each attribute before the program appends the next factor name to the variable. So let's run the script. First, you need to take the cursor and click it at the beginning of the script. We're now going to run the script line by line. To do this on using Windows or Linux, you need to press Ctrl R. On a Mac, you need to press Command Option R. So let's start. The first variable we're going to define is the number of Bellis perennis, or daisy plants, in each quadrat. Note that I've split this over two lines so that you can see it all on the screen. So I have to press Ctrl R twice to enter this variable. Now I'm going to enter the location. This is using the rep command. Let's ensure that the rep command has worked properly by running location to display the variable. And as we can see, we have our locations. Now these locations are actually factors. A factor is a variable that allows you to take your main data and split it up into samples. So we need to tell R that this is a factor. To turn it into a factor, we're going to use the factor command. Now we can run the test. We can see that the H value is 14.508 and the probability value given is 0 0.002289. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. So, a p-value of 0.002289 suggests we can reject the null hypothesis and that there is a significant difference in the density of Bellis perennis between the four grass environments we looked at. However, what it does not tell us is which of the four grass environments are significantly different in their daisy density to each other. To find this out, we have to do a post hoc test. In this case, we are going to use a modified Man Whitley U test called the Wilcoxon test in R to individually compare each sample with every other sample using the pairwise command. So, why not do this from the beginning? Because using all the data in one test means we minimize type 1 errors. This advantage would be lost if we did a straightforward Man Whitley U test. So, to counter this, I have used the whole method to adjust the p value and make type 1 errors less likely. So let's run the test. We can see that we have a little table. The program has compared the lawn to the cricket pitch, the quadrangle to the cricket pitch and all the other combinations. Using our transition value of 0.05 we can see there is a significant difference between the lawn and the cricket pitch with a property value of 0.0092. 
and the quadrangle and the cricket pitch with a probability value of 0 0.0301. All of the other comparisons appear to be not significant. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test, or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.